specifically thinking about uh, the intensification laboratory, the iLab, uh, our core mission uh, within the process development intensification lab is to enable uh, the acquisition of deep, robust process understanding, uh, but doing so in a resource sparing way. Here I refer to resources not just from a cost perspective, but also from a time and an FTE deployment perspective as well. So really kind of focusing on how can we build mechanistic insight uh, as efficiently uh, as, as, as possible. I would say that our mission is kind of centrally focused around the concept of data intensification, meaning how do we go about collecting data more efficiently? How do we take that data and reduce it into a manageable manageable pieces and then how do we perform data analysis that can be used to then drive either process design or business based decisions this is all facilitated through the judicious choice of enabling technologies such as process modeling high throughput automation process analytical technologies reactor uh, automated reactor implementation statistical design experiments etc from an equipment capability perspective, uh, the iLab, much like most of the technology labs and even many of the project labs within CPDC, uh, are, are, are outfitted in, in what we consider to be a, a pretty typical um, and but relatively modern uh, reactor configuration. So we have a number of hoods that are dedicated to automated lab reactors, such as the one shown here that has both, for example, an EasyMax vessel and an OptiMax vessel allowing seamless transition from the 100 mil scale up to the 1 liter scale. It's also fully instrumented with um, Atlo Toledo's PAT technology, so PVM, uh, infrared spectroscopy, FTIR, FBRM, uh, and we also have capabilities from a Raman perspective as well. In addition to the PAT technologies that I described on the last screen, uh, I also wanted to highlight some of the other capabilities that we have in the in, within the iLab and, and, and then the rest of the tech labs for that matter within CPDC. So there's an assortment of automated reactors that include the EasyMax and OptiMax as I showed, but also including things such as the Multimax and the RC1. We also have access to a number of benchtop automation type systems uh, that are more high throughput or parallel operation equipment. Um, so Integrity 10 parallel reaction blocks, as well as its associated uh, Amigo Chem parallel sampling technology. We've also we also have a HEL poly block capabilities, uh, as well as are actively evaluating the ChemSpeed Auto Plant uh, for, for 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 parallel reaction um, execution. We also have Meller Toledo's Easy Sampler uh, that we use to do product uh, monitoring via uh, automated HPLC sampling. We find that to be a really uh, informative piece of equipment as well. From a process modeling perspective, we, 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 we have a number of home-built process models, but we also leverage some commercial packages like DynoChem, Aspen, Fluent, and G-Crystal for various types of modeling activities. In addition to these capabilities, we have a substantial array of analytical capabilities at our disposal at our disposal that includes particle characterization and other typical analytical tools uh, you know and, and, and when looking holistically at all of these capabilities it, it, it forms a, a you know a suite of tools uh, that lend itself to, to, to modern experimentation strategies and, and, and robust process understanding builds Again, taking a look at inline PAT, um, as I mentioned previously, we have a number of Mettler Toledo uh, based PAT technologies. So FTIR for um, reaction solute concentration monitoring. Uh, we have Raman spectroscopy that we use uh, predominantly for polymorphic form uh, transition monitoring. Uh, FBRM for crystal size uh, monitoring in situ uh, or cord length distribution specifically as well as in, in situ microscopy in the form of PVM. So in addition to those PAT technologies, as I mentioned, we are heavily invested within uh, Mettler's ecosystem for automated lab reactors as well. That includes both the EasyMax and the OptiMax automated lab reactors, amongst others. Most of the discussion that I'm going to talk about today is, is, is a summary of experiments conducted at both the EasyMax and the OptiMax scale. Uh, to give a little bit of an overview on the EasyMax, it's a dual reactor setup. It has vessels that range from 10 to 100 milliliters in reaction in usable reaction volume. 
It's an automated system in the sense that it has precise control and real-time monitoring of key reactor data, which includes things such as temperature, agitation rate, reagent dosing volumes, etc. It's also very well integrated into the iControl suite of software, which allows for pretty convenient data sharing across multiple platforms, such as FBRM, FTIR, PVM, etc. Uh, it also has the capability to interface with Mettler's uh, universal control box, which allows us to bring in um, analog signals from other uh, third-party vendors, uh, enabling us to keep a pretty robust data set all self-contained within the iControl suite of software. So in that regard, it's actually incredibly attractive. Additionally, we also have a number of Optimax vessels, which Personally, I consider it to simply be a larger sibling of the EasyMax, uh, vessels ranging in volume from the 250 mil scale up to a liter scale. I would say it has pretty comparable automation capabilities to the EasyMax. And the, one of the benefits of this is that it allows pretty seamless transfer of a recipe for a particular process as you move from, the, from a 100 mil scale up to the 1 liter scale.